Hey everyone and welcome to a new episode of Tea with Steve Live. This week I have literally one of my go-to experts and I'm going to absolutely spoil everybody who's watching and listening right now. Um, I'm very, very excited to bring on my LinkedIn go-to person. If I ever, ever need anything answering question, if I've got a problem, a challenge, I'm just like, I'm stuck, um, I go to this lady. So I'd like to introduce you to the LinkedIn expert for me, and to be fair, you guys too, is Naomi Johnson. Naomi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. You are absolutely, absolutely welcome. I'm really, really excited because we've just been doing some chatting behind the scenes and people don't know that yet. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be gold, absolute gold. So tell me what you've been up to. Let, let the you know the listeners, the, what, the viewers um, sort of know a little bit more about you from your perspective, and then we can dive into the world of LinkedIn. Yeah, cool. So um, I've been writing people's LinkedIn profiles for the last five years, um, positioning them as the go to expert by how um, we pitch what they do in a really relational way that builds rapport with the reader and positions them as that trusted expert um, who they can trust and also connects them with their sales funnel. So it, it calls people to action to actually go down the normal path of um, buying and doing it in a really natural way because LinkedIn is all about relationships. Um, yep. And it's also, it might shock you, but oh my gosh, nobody on LinkedIn cares about you. <laughs> nobody can, people on LinkedIn don't care about you until you become relevant to them. Yep. It's a super highway of distraction. It's like the marketplace. If you think of the big, busiest marketplace in, in, the, in the world, all the different stores, people buzzing around, really, really busy. That is what LinkedIn is. And it, okay. it, is, it is a mecca of distractions. So in a day, I would say that most people did not come to LinkedIn to see your LinkedIn profile. Right. Um, <laughs> and, but they might, they, they may stumble upon it because it was a suggested profile to land on. It was in the inbox and um, you sent them a message or um, they saw a status update you wrote or a comment, your profile comes up. And so that's how they've come to you. And when someone comes to your LinkedIn profile, they are literally thinking, is this relevant to me? Is this a distraction? Do I want to go here right now? And, that is why that headline is going to get the person to click on it and that opening paragraph is so important because that's going to be the thing that makes them stop and read and that's okay. the thing that interrupt their den have them go huh this is interesting and then start that process with you um it's ignorant to think that anyone actually woke up this morning and thought oh i'm gonna go and read profiles of people i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's a real science behind it um and then obviously how that connects into like you may have built that nice rapport and people go, oh, yeah, I haven't really thought about that before. I should get a solution. And then does it just end there or does it end with does it go towards that person thinking, actually, I want to reach out and connect with you and have a conversation? And then in that wait time between them having a conversation with you, what are they thinking? What are they pondering? Could you have actually told them what your packages are and how you work with people? So they're like, actually, do you know what? I could see myself doing that. If this conversation goes well, I could see myself buying that. Right. And then there's a conversation with you. And I also teach people how to have that, that sales conversation in a structured way. So that within half an hour, both of you can decide mutually if you want to work together. Ah. And is the solution right for this person? Is it right for them at this time? Have they diagnosed the problem they have correctly? And therefore, is your solution correct for them? And do you actually want to work with this person? Can you get results? Uh, is it worth their investment? Is there a quicker way for them to get the result? Because in my LinkedIn profiles, I just tell people everything. Go do it yourself if you want to. And people go, <laughs> no, I, I'll have you write it. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but if you do that, so, I can do that myself. Carry on. Because um, we want to solve meaningful pro problems for people who yeah. really value that investment. Um, I don't know if I'm talking a lot here, but I have this really good analogy of when I moved no, out keep of going. my house. <laughs> I moved out of my house years ago and uh, the night before a party I said yeah I sold my gas oven to somebody and we've got a van and we're going to take it over to this person's house and he looks at me and he goes well how are you going to unplug it and I said pull the gas thing out of the wall and he goes no, no. <laughs> he says I'm a plumber you can't do that you've got to have a qualified mm. person to come over and pull it out and I said what are you talking about and he goes, look, I'm a plumber. I will be at your house tomorrow at 8.30 and I will take it out of the wall. Whoa. It'll cost you 50 quid. I and love I went, that. Yeah, and I went, 50 quid, are you serious? But I understood why we're buying it. I go home, I tell my housemate, we've got this guy coming at 8.30, he's going to take it out, this is going to be great. It's going to cost us 50 quid. You're happy to split the cost? He was furious. 
he's like, I'm not paying that amount of money for something I could do myself. <laughs> and then the guy comes over and he pulls it, he walks in, he walks up to the gas cooker, puts his hand around the back. Okay, done now, I'll be off, that's 50 quid. And then, um, and he, the, 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 the reaction of my housemate, my friend didn't actually end up charging me, which was great, but my yeah. the reaction of my housemate, I bring this story up because if you feel like you could do something yourself, you will resent having paid for it. Mm. And so why would we want to have anyone out there resenting our services and not liking us? So my thing is, is if you, if you received your LinkedIn profile draft from me and looked at it and went, I could have done that myself, that's not good for my reputation. It's not good for the vibes that are out there. I don't want people feeling that way. So I tell them everything. This is how I'm going to approach this, your profile. This is why I'm going to approach it this way. Here's how it will, why it will work. And they go, yeah, I love it. And I say, great. Do you want to do, can you do that yourself? Or would you like me to help? And then some, sometimes people say, actually, I think I can do it myself because they're writers and they can. And then I go, great, cool, carry on. Less for me to do. <laughs> 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 there is such hard work, I tell you. Um, I really go quite, 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 well, really work hard on them. Um, so yeah, and then, and so, so just back to LinkedIn, um, you know, that's the way I think all of us should be, that when we're having our sales conversations, we come with that genuine that genuine take. So I teach people how to have that sales conversation. Yeah. Because I've found that quite often the people that maybe can't afford it, it's not the right time for them, and we agree together that this isn't right, they've got to put more foundations down in the business first. Yep. Um, or they think that they can do it themselves. That honestly, in that conversation, because they still, they, they, they actually become my biggest referrers. They become okay. my big fans and, and anyone else that if you take that approach because they really value that honesty that you weren't going 100%. for the self, you weren't self-seeking. Now, if you have that kind of rapport with the people that you're connected to on LinkedIn and LinkedIn is, is like a bank with all the people that you've ever met and all the different groups of your life all come together and because they're all connected, it's creating an interest whereas if you know, like if you had all, if you had 10,000 pounds and you put it into 10 bank accounts, you're not going to, get a very good interest rate. Well, you're not anyway, pretty much these days, but <laughs> just pretend we get good interest. Um, if you had it in 10 bank accounts, you're not going to get as much as if you put it all into the same bank account. And so I look at LinkedIn like that. So you have your friends you went to college with, the ones you went to school with, the ones that you for yourself you were in the police force with, that you went on a training course with. If all these people are in different places, you're not going to get the same return on investment of all of that if you, unless you, until you put them all in LinkedIn and then you start to see the connectivity of all of them and they get to mm. share, they get to meet and you get to introduce them and you send out a status update and this person responds and then this person responds and it just it just goes and goes and goes. So if you have all that trust in your network and people are coming and commenting or, and, and speaking very well of you, yeah, uh, then all of that is all of that is cumulative and has a massive impact. Um, and that's why, you know, it's really important to take this, this approach because I think we can probably say this happens a lot with um, corporates and I kind of got caught out with them um, with this at one point where it's a faceless salesperson. They don't really care about you. They're just trying to hit their sales objectives. Yeah. It drives me and insane. They, they, they've been taught how to handle objections, which honestly is just a way of tripping you up so you can't think straight. If yeah. my objection is my objection, it's an honest objection. Either you tell me that the value of the product is so great and it's going to solve all my problems and therefore I'm going to part with my cash, or I'm not. Don't manipulate me into it. Is you know, And, and one time I, I had the conversation with someone and I got really manipulated into it. And I was like, oh, okay, then, yes, all right. He goes, wow, great. Do you mind if I just go ring the bell? And I, I know. Like, oh. I just couldn't. I just felt sick. And... It, you know, as it transpired, it was a contract I couldn't get out of for three years. But it was it was such the wrong product for my business. It was really, really hurting me financially, making these monthly outgoings. Yeah. I just pushed and pushed and pushed until I got to the very top of the company and said, you just shouldn't have sold me this. It was the wrong thing to sell. I want to stop this contract. Release me from it. And they did eventually release me from it. And from that, I get a really good story of, how it feels to buy something when you haven't properly tested if it's the right thing um, for that person and being that real honest, trusted advisor of this isn't the right thing for you. This isn't going to mm -hmm. work. You, you haven't developed enough of these things to get return on investment. So 
so yeah, I'm kind of talking my philosophy yourself as well as LinkedIn, but it all is your reputation, all your, you know, your approach and being a trusted advisor. And that does transfer to LinkedIn and the kind of content you're also going to be sharing. Um, that, openness, that openness and helpfulness that you can have with sharing with things that you share. Yeah. Um, and that is why we're so aligned because I have the same philosophy. I was on a sales call yesterday um, for the Heart Brand Academy, and uh, the lady said, "You know, could I have a course?" And absolutely, we sat there and we started having a chat. And, and she just went, "I'm in." I went, "Okay." In, in the what? I, I completely forgot that I was. We were there to, to, to talk about the Heart Brand Academy. We were having a chat. We were, we were talking about. It, and I said, "I'm not here for any heavy sales pitch." I said, I want to make sure that it's the right fit for you and you are the right fit for it. I said, because otherwise that journey is going to become really um, disjointed. It's going to be a, an uncomfortable process for both you and I. And I don't want that. I want you to have massive success I, and I want you to talk about it and share it with your community so they can have success. And you know what? It's so interesting. Like, um, I've got various stories I could tell here, but... Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, as you'll come to know through my work and hopefully this conversation, I am very, very big on the expert entrepreneur and have coined a term called expert economy. And it is very much about people like you and I who have decided to take the risk to come out of employment where we get the guaranteed paycheck, to take it all upon ourselves, to go out into the world and say, hey, I can solve this problem for you. And have all of that hanging in on our shoulders, that quality, that balance, the life balance, the balance of family commitments with financial commitments. And, mm. you know, there's a lot that we take on. Um, and a lot of the methods that other people use to grow a business don't really apply to us. And I, had, I think this is probably the best example. So last summer, um, I took on a contract with somebody to help them build something. And we needed to take on various um, professionals to help us. And so I called on the people who created my brand, a really great company called In The Box. Um, and, and Christian um, came out with me and he came to this meeting and he sits down and with his business partner, we, they sit down and I'm there and this, the client is there. And, that, and he, it was just such an awkward conversation. The guy was really enthusiastic. This is what we're going to do, da, 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 da. And at the end of it, we, we walked out, we got in the car and they went, oh, oh my gosh, it was so much for them. And they said, no, me, I'll tell you right now, we're not even putting in a proposal because we left, we left working for other people because we didn't want to work for bad bosses and bad clients. Right. And we are not taking on or even considering working for this guy because we don't have to we don't have to be treated that way we don't have to be spoken to that way we don't have to take calls and then they just kind of worked out how this would be so we don't want to take calls at, at like 11 o'clock at night we don't want to take calls randomly with somebody just going off on one about something and um, you know it's and they, they really knew who they were and the quality of life that they wanted and how taking on a bad client can really really impact that and I think we all like mental health is a conversation that you really stand for and we've, yep. we've talked about a lot and you supported me through my own journey last year um that it your mental health needs to be protected so so yes. so guardedly um you know like last night I, I just worked three nights in a row with my new podcast and they're loving it and last night i was like yeah really go for it and i'm like <laughs> if you go for it if you go for it tonight you're gonna end up in trouble just relax <laughs> you yeah. know um, and it is like you just getting to that point where you you know yourself and your limits, and um, and yeah, when you take on a bad client and you get trapped in something and you can't get out of it, and you can't get out of it because your finances are attached to it, but you really need to. Yeah, that is a position that really takes its toll and is just you know, and what we want to avoid, and I think that's why we have to be so careful what clients we take on. Um, and when our intuition says this isn't right, trust go it. with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Trust it. I mean, and I've been in that situation too. You know, I want everyone who's watching and listening to understand that it's not just the odd person that has this. Everybody on that entrepreneurial journey will take on the wrong customer at the wrong time. And then due to their standards, will want to serve and deliver that person um, that, what you've promised them. And it will be tiresome. Yeah. It really, yeah. really will. 
Because I always say as an expert entrepreneur that you're here to help solve a very particular problem. You're here to take someone from where they are now to where they need to get to. And you're in partnership with them. And you don't have to have all of the answers because every single project you do, there's going to be a curveball that comes out that you weren't expecting. Now, a fake expert, someone who's read a book and says, now I can help you, doesn't know how to navigate those challenges. But you as an industry expert, you may never have come across that challenge before, but you know how to steer the ship and to get around it. Yep. And you're doing court calm, cool and collected. Um, and so you're going to be there in partnership until they get that result. And if you're going to be there with somebody who is just treating you badly, can't respect boundaries and telephone calls late at night, et cetera, yep. then, you know, it, you, you can't, you know, it's just not going to work. And I think it's worth also pointing out to people that are watching and listening is sometimes it's okay to have the calls at 11 o'clock at night because you have that relationship or, you know, there's a balance, isn't there? Yeah. But if I'm hearing from Christmas dinner test. Go on. No, I've not, but no one, if no you one take me Christmas, not happening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Sorry. I said, no <laughs> one is allowed to call me at Christmas. <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> No. Um, the Christmas dinner test is basically if your client's house burned down Christmas Eve and them and their kids had nowhere to go and you had room at your table, would you want to invite them to come and join your family? Yeah. And would you have a nice day? Yeah. Um, that is the Christmas dinner test. And I think it's a great one, especially for what we are saying about sticking with the client. If shit hits the fan, how do they react? Do you want to be around them? And, and do you gel with them and enjoy them enough that you would bend over backwards to help? Because yeah. essentially going in as an expert, you're not, you're not, this isn't the gig economy. This isn't being a freelancer where you're just performing a function. Yep. This is saying, I'm going to take you on a journey from here to there. And I'm going to be there for you through the shit times. And metaphorically, if it were that the house broke down and you had nowhere to live in a business sense, I'm still going to be there and I'm going to open my doors and help. Um, because that's what you're actually doing as the expert entrepreneur. I love that. Do you know what I mean? The expert yeah. economy. So um, and that's why people will pay you as well, you know, pay you what you're, you're worth. And, in, and, you know, it's so funny. I think you really know that you're onto something when people pay you what you what you you've you've asked and then they start offering their service to you for free. Like, well, let me do this for you. Let me do this for you. I'm like, you know, how to pay a service. I should be paying. Yeah, but just let me do it for you. <laughs> yeah, and that's, yeah. I think that for me, when when a client starts offering me their service just because they want to and they're also paying me, I'm like, yep. I know I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, before we go into sort of breaking down how you, you know, how you structure LinkedIn, you've yeah. mentioned a few times the expert economy and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And I know that you're a published author. So, and it, and I know, and just through your brand and your colors, we're having a conversation about that and how the next book's going to look. So tell us about your books, how they can help people, what you've got, show this pretty branding. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite is the pink. <laughs> I, actually, I, I was saying, Steve, earlier that about 15 years ago, I had a, the title of a book and it would make it would be make a pink book. And I actually just feel disattached to it now. And I can't write that book, but I might do it at some point. And um, yeah, so so just on the expert economy, um, this is for me um, a life calling. Um, having started off in business 15 years ago, um, taking advice from different types of people at different points and then realizing that there's different types of businesses and the advice doesn't always apply. Um, and everything that I learned, and there's a good segue there, that um, I actually started off a life coaching business in January 2006. And okay. 2008, when the big crisis happened, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was I was nine miles as the crow flies away from Canary Wharf in my seven story apartment building <laughs> and i uh, could see straight through over to that area can't see you know i could see the area and like i'm standing there having my own financial meltdown and i lose i lose i have to walk away from my business um okay and i lose, I lose that business and um and honestly i will just level with you i could not blame it on the economy i could only blame it on having made every single mistake in the book um absolute novice trying to just trying to figure it out you know as yep. Anthony Robbins says if you want to succeed burn the bridges um, and yep. burn the boats go burn to the boats. island 
votes and holy crap did I burn those votes <laughs> um, and I had to stick it out and I had to figure it out and um, what transpired from that was me actually writing a book about what I learned um, called Grassroots to Green Shoots uh, which I've just updated for 2020. So this is uh, six fundamental principles to help early stage business owners prepare the ground for steady growth um, and includes a 30 day rescue plan should you be really in the shits right now um hopefully no one needs that but it there's a lot of good principles that come through in that so i wrote that 10 years ago um about that period and everything i learned and i have um now just updated it so that's about to go on kindle in the next week or two cool um and then going forward um wanting to share my wisdom um i've only got protocol copy of it here but this is actually my third book called the expert economy um, i'm excited to read this Yes, we do. I am super excited to read this. Yeah, I love it. And I love that it's got all these colours and all different things in it. Oh, it's it's weeks away now. Um, and this is, um, it's, well, I'll just say, as an expert entrepreneur whose passion lies in delivering transformational results for our clients, not in our ability to sell and market our services, we need a simple formula for winning new clients that allows us to stay focused on our clients and fulfilled in what we do um, because one of the biggest things I've witnessed is um, people just becoming worn out trying to figure out the marketing mm. so much so the steep the steep learning curve that by the time they get somewhere they're no longer an in industry expert because every industry is moving so fast right now yeah and um, by the time they figured out marketing which is a whole other career um, <laughs> they are bent out of shape they're not fulfilled they aren't living their purpose anymore um, and yeah, so I, I, this is about making people, helping people to, I'll say it, turn their study time, the time that they naturally read about their subject, they get newspaper articles and journals and all the things they do to learn, to study, to stay an expert and all the people that they speak to, to know what's going on in industry. Yep. Actually, when I break it down for people, which I won't do here for time's sake, when you break all that down, you're actually doing sales and marketing. So I tell people how to make the sales and marketing a very, very natural fit. Um, and my course gives away all the, all the top level information you need to be like and the, the sales, like I was talking about, how yep. you structure that sales conversation, that you can't take two hours over it. You can't have three or four conversations to get that sell. You need to do it within half an hour. You need to control the conversation. You need to structure the conversation. It needs to feel natural. It needs to elicit all the right information on both sides. Um, so we have a process for doing that in half an hour. Love um, it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, can't wait. I, I cannot wait to read this. And the reason being is, other than the fact that I know it's going to be packed full of value because I know that I know where your standards are and they're right up there. Yeah. Is the fact that since we met, I have seen different pieces of this journey coming together. And then you show me this and I'm like, oh. so remember, expert entrepreneurs you know and the conversations we've had over that and and you know, the highs and the lows and the and the, the mental health conversation that we were having where we want to have the thing around do around the table and that's not to say that's that's off the table but i've just been seeing all these things that have been coming together and like i know that that great stuff is going to be in that book and i'm excited to read it yeah yeah thank you have to get you a copy asap 100 um, <laughs> percent i'll do the digital copy <laughs> <laughs> it just it's just with the editor right now having gone through it again um, when's it coming out um well i go back from the editor on the 21st of august and then i've got to go back through it i'm well with the podcast which is about to launch in the yep. next week or two um i'm i'll be really straight up here and building the audience first and then of course do a big hit with the book so it, i think we're looking around november for a big hit but it will be available mid-september cool. um so i will get your copy mid-september um so I, I love this book i i love the way i've put it together and um everything I that see you. you can see the glow on your face i'm like <laughs> you're if you're that excited because some people write a book and you go, yeah i wrote a book and i'll send you a copy yeah it's like I, you don't get this level of <gasps> from well, someone who's not passionate about it. the content and the ability to teach the content because i just believe in what i'm saying so much and like it's the solution that people need and i'm as I, I actually asked someone the other day because they'd made a comment years ago that was kind of like holding me back a little bit like oh i don't want to do that and i said can you just clarify what you did say to me that day because it's like really ringing on my brain and and she's oh well it, you know she broke it down and she says with you naomi you are um 
you're so genuine generous with your information that you you the and, and and I was like do you know what and, and that all fits with what I was saying there but it just I just want to share I just want to give to people this knowledge yep. because especially with everybody being furloughed right now and um, there are going to be and knowing what we know about recessions and how that really affects the top end of the workforce yeah and um, you know it can be if a recession goes on for 10 years it can be very hard for people to get back into employment if they're over 55 for example um just like it affects the graduates that puts them right behind it puts the older people back behind as well um so what I'm looking at here is like, how do we get the knowledge that is stored with all these great people into the organizations that need it? And these organizations are getting used to the idea now of hiring expertise for, the, for what needs to be done and then letting them yeah. go. And there is another book that's come out in the waiting time since I first put this on um, Amazon. Um, it's probably been sat there two years, to be honest, which I'm glad because another book has come out by like a big time publisher and it's called The Expertise Economy. And when I actually picked that book up, it was a corporate written book, bog standard. And it was looking at it from the corporate's perspective, almost like individuals and people are there to be churned out. Right. We hire them in and we churn them out. We hire, you know, it's really kind of like factory of how we use people's skills and it doesn't have any heart in it. And I, and I think from my own journey, I'm just so aware that there are real people behind all of this and yeah. i know how you know when your mental health starts suffering and you you go down you go down fast yeah. um, and and i've been there many times um you know and that's where grassroots to green shoots came out of one of those periods and, and just being able to share this to stop people going through that and to to help them to know what advice to take on when to take that advice on and what stage is their business at what does their business need right now and what is the 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 um overlay of the whole journey you're going to go on so then when you know the journey you're going to go on and you've got just enough of everything you can then choose where you're going to go in and invest so you might say actually i've got you know naomi sales scripts and now and i've got this approach but actually i just want to go a little bit deeper okay but you should have enough but you can go a little bit deeper so when you hear a sales course come up you're like well yeah actually i think i might go on that sales course but just first does it fit with my values? Does it fit with my approach? Is this the way I want to sell? Yeah. Uh, because again, like we were talking about ringing the bell sales earlier on, right. that approach to selling is not, if you spent 500 pounds in two days on a course like that, you'll go, oh, <laughs> and you'd be bent out of shape because you're an expert or you're an expert about. And so then come home from a course and then try and figure out what that means to you and put it into your world Figure it out, girl. Yeah, it must be like this. Gee, even like someone who's got a marketing degree is going to struggle with that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and then test it and then follow it through. And then you get distracted because you do take on a client and that's like a big chunk of your time. And then you come back to that campaign and then da 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 da. da. Um, and so my thing is helping people to bill 70% of their time, allow them 20% of their time to study to remain an expert in their field, yep. and 10% of the time is moving all the pieces around. Right. Okay. And that twenty percent study time, as I hinted before, is actually the sales and marketing, and it's a very natural overflow. Um, it keeps people in in their glorious shape of them, what they were born to do, um, rather than getting knocked out of shape and becoming a, a camp marketer who runs campaigns and email strategies. And it's not what you were wanting to do when you started. <laughs> <laughs> So for all the people that are watching and listening then and going right back to the basics of their profile, because I see so many people using their LinkedIn as their CV, their online CV. Um, and we refer to online CVs as being your content, your journey visually, whether that be YouTube and Instagram and, and showing that. How can they structure? What What is your best advice right now for someone to say, OK, it's August, it's it's the summer. I, I might have a little bit of downtime with the family. I might be going to days on the beach. They're running around like headless chickens. I've got my laptop or my iPad with me. What improvements can they make to think, actually, do you know what? This, you know, this will make an impact in, mm. on me come September. Yeah, absolutely. Um well, let's talk about what you don't want straight away. Um, you don't want a CV based um, profile. You want to not talk about the functions that you performed in that job because 
as somebody in marketing, because we are talking to people who are marketing themselves as experts or business owners with with a service, right? And just a caveat to that, even a salesperson, I've just done a massive project um, for a, a massive, massive uh, financial company with, well, they, they have 30 billion in assets, just to give you wow. an idea. <laughs> and they literally saved the Brazilian economy years ago. Um, and yeah, so a huge, huge company. And I've just written 25 profiles for their team. Wow. Yeah, all individual customized from an interview. And oh, I love that company. I really do. Um, <laughs> the values that just come through and what they do. Um, and so, you know, each of those people are employees. Okay. So what I'm just saying here is like, even if it's, this is, you're, we're looking at this from the perspective of your employee or you are an employee in somebody's company. Um, whatever is on your C, your LinkedIn profile is what you are marketing. So if you have your CV on there, like a recruiter would want, yep. you're selling yourself as a product to buy, yep. a, a person, as an employee, as someone a recruiter will come and look at and say, this person might be interested in having a job. So if you are someone who's finding that your inbox is full of recruiters wanting to connect with you and then talk to you, yep. it's because that's what you're actually marketing. That is what you're putting out into the world. Right. Uh, I had this with an architect and that was happening to him constantly. We changed his profile to make it all the things I'm about to say, like business led, those recruiters completely dropped off and instead he had young graduates approaching him saying i love your company and the values can i work for you right. um, and customers coming as well and also his peers in the industry started reaching out and when they reached out they wrote really engaging in introductions yeah because the the message was different so if you do have a cv and it's the functions and the results that you took created you are now a product i am marketing myself as a product you can come and buy it as me Yep. But when you are a salesperson generating business, um, and as an entrepreneur in your own business, you are a salesperson, and um, that's not the relationship that you want to be having. And um, you actually are wanting to put the product forward. You're wanting people to get what the product is. Now, all the product information and the functionality of the product goes on the website because you are a human being and your profile is you and people are going to connect with you as a person. And yep. there's going to be a relationship there. And it is really important that everybody in your organization feels like their profile represents them. Okay. Not the company. So 25 people in sales for this, this big company, um, each of them left feeling that even though I'm talking about the products and the features of the product, it still feels like me. And so that is to find out what is it about the company? What is the values of the company that really stand out? Why do they believe in the company? Um, sometimes these guys are like, we've been 50 years in industry. We really share um, sector knowledge, industry knowledge. We're pretty much in every country in the world. Well, that would be wrong. 30, 32 countries. There are 193. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's only really a little bit off the mark. <laughs> <Just quiet. laughs> anyway. Moving on. Anyway, at least I corrected myself there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like they, they, you know, um, the values of the company, like they, you know, and their commitment to um, the life cycle of the um, the life cycle of the machinery that they're putting together, and the fact that the average um, technology has a life cycle of eighteen months, but they don't landfill. They they like, you know, so what are these different things that their the company has going on? Each one, it was so interesting how each one of them featured something different in the interview. So okay. I got to say different about it so here's the top line use your headline i've seen a lot of people do this now use the headline to grab people's attention by telling them the problem that you solve avoid saying founder director or owner because unless you are the founder of a company with 60 people and it's on a FTSE 100 <laughs> what does it matter um or the director um, so with these guys, I would put a, a, a vice president of uh, Fleet Solutions, for example. I would put that on there because there were 20 people underneath them and they and their seniority needed to be stated. Yep. But for everybody below, that job description doesn't really mean very much. It's more about what am I here for and the problem that I solve. Um, and we want to get some keywords in there, um, like financial solutions, Fleet, fleet for example, um, or leasing in, in this example. So, we, you know, 
our target audience is going, ah, remember that when it comes up on the different places on LinkedIn, which you'll be familiar with, everyone will because they're on there, where the, the 120 characters, where they filter off. So I help people, so, and I help entrepreneurs solve, and then that it trails off and I actually can't see what you solve. Yeah. Think about that one. <laughs> um, so then the next thing we're going to do is we want to get the photo on there. Um, I was really disappointed uh, about four years, four or five years ago now, when LinkedIn changed from having the square photo, which was bigger, and they went for the circle photo. Yeah. Um, for two years, working for another organization, I delivered LinkedIn profile reviews in conversation with the person, and I was selling LinkedIn training. And I would have the most extreme experiences in how I saw people. For example, one time I was talking to someone and I just couldn't connect with her. I just couldn't feel like she was really there. And it just, I felt so blinded in this right. conversation. And as I was going, just trying to figure this out, I was going through her website, um, the company website, and eventually I found the About Us and I found a photo of her. And as soon as I had the photo like this, instantly the connection happened. Yep. And the relationship changed and I felt like, ah, oh, I feel like I know you now. Okay. Um, Another time I had a guy on the phone, he'd come in from Australia. Um, it was a very weird time of night, day for us. And I was like, I don't really want to be doing this. He's just a kid in the organization. I can see from his picture, like he's 20. And the way that the conversation was going, and then towards the tail end of it, it turned out that picture was 10 years old. Right. And he was like a 33 year old. And I, I, I can't remember. I, I, it just switched it so much. Okay. And if I had known I was, and these are like what we all do, but it's really good to be self-aware of how you've been. If I had known that I was talking to a 33 year old with this company, not like a 23 year old, I, I realized that I would behave differently. I'd hate to okay. say that's true, but it is actually true. Um, and it was really wake up to call like, huh, how you treat people because you perceive them. That's really interesting. Um, and so the photo is really, really important. And LinkedIn for me is like going to a networking event where you're all milling around and you're there to exchange business cards and talk about business. If I came up to you, Steve, and, I, and you wanted to work that room and I came up to you and said, hey, look at my pictures of my cat. I'm so obsessed with my cat, which is really true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I came up to you and just had a conversation. You'd be like, oh, gee, you are wasting my time right now. <laughs> So anything like that, where right. it's like someone might look at you and go, mm, you're really wasting my time. I know we're friends, but are you are you serious right now? <laughs> or if I came up to and yep. I didn't know you and I said, yeah, I'm Naomi and I've got this beautiful cat. I love her. Blah, 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 blah. You'd be like, oh, are we having this conversation? It's not appropriate for the business networking event. But if I met you down the pub or I met you at a theme park and I started off down that way, you'd be like, oh, what a sweet girl. Isn't she sweet? And uh, when you might actually... <laughs> You might engage with my cat pictures. Um, but, you know, it's, it's what I always say is what, how Facebook is like a theme park. And you can have, if people give you permission, you can have a business conversation. If you were at a theme park and you saw your ideal client there with their seven year old and five year old and one year old and screaming, and you went up to them and went, oh my goodness, I've been phoning you all week. How wonderful to see you. What a coincidence. And yep. I put I sent that proposal over on Friday. Did you get it? They'd be like, get stuffed. And yeah. you would lose that. You would lose them as a prospect, prospect I guarantee you. Um, but if in that situation you went up and you went, oh, what wonderful children you've got that are the same age as my kids, or, oh, you like basketball. Oh, have you been down to the basketball courts? That's what Facebook is. And then if that after that conversation of honoring the space, that person then turns to you and goes, oh, by the way, I saw that, in, that proposal you sent over. I'm going to look at it on Monday. Um, can I ask you a question? That is them. That that's what Facebook is. LinkedIn is highly, highly professional. So if you wouldn't show up at a business networking event wearing your wedding dress, with a pint of beer, um, or whatever, then don't show up on LinkedIn that way. I had somebody once send me a screenshot of a, fake, a LinkedIn profile saying this person's just applied for a job with me. Like honestly, why would I? hire him and it was a guy holding a pint of beer and he was just smiling 
a little bit hazy because it was night time, so the photo wasn't great. And a photo speaks a thousand words because I really looked at this photo and I was like, well, okay, what can I get from this photo? And I realized that the guy was using it and thought it was a professional photo because around his neck was a lanyard. You could just see the st string of the lanyard. And I thought, no, he's taking this because it's a business related photo. He's at an exhibition or something. It's like an exhibition or something in the evening when they're all chilling yeah. down and he's got a pint of beer and he's had a nice photo taken. It just leaks a thousand words, but it and like most people probably wouldn't figure out what the lanyard is um, and figure that no, out. It could, it could be deemed that you're at a festival with your lanyard <laughs> on and you've got your pint of beer. Yeah, so you can see why he did it, but then you also why why someone would react to that. So you are wanting to make that good first impression. You know, it's like seven o'clock in the morning and you're walking into that networking event and you are looking your best. I am ready to do business. I'm sensible. I'm going to have a sensible conversation. Do you want to talk to me? And I'm friendly and approachable and I can go and have a beer with you. That's the kind of photo you want. And that's really, really important because that's me looking at you across the room and saying, actually, I think I'll cross the room and say hello to you. Looking mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, I see your photo and I think, oh, that's a person I could have a conversation with. Then it's the shake your hand. What's your name? Names on your profile. Um, and this is all kind of like what happens in real life, replicated on LinkedIn. Okay. And then you go, well, what do you do? So networking event. Ah, oh, hello. You're Jane. Oh, great. Cool. And what do you do? That is photo, name, headline. Yep. And then um, we need some context to the conversation. Like what okay. are we here to talk about? If you suddenly start pitching me your services, I'm gone. The... On a website, someone has probably used some SEO terms to arrive onto your website. They know they have a problem and they're looking for a solution. They are somebody who has done enough research to identify that this problem gets solved with this solution and they know what words to use because their education has got to that point. Okay. When you have people who, who are at that point when they just need to buy a service, it's called the red ocean. Um, right. It's where literally everybody's fishing and there's a cat fight going on, or fish fight rather, and there might be some cats in there. Um, and there's <laughs> this, bloody, <laughs> would be. this is bloody, it's, it's called the Red Ocean because it's like a bloody fist fight in there, trying to get the client, reduce the amount that we're charging, uh, price drop discount, load on at extra benefits. It's a real fight because there's a limited number of people. Mm. Whereas on LinkedIn, as I said, it is literally the whole ocean is pretty much there. Um, anyone serious about business would be on LinkedIn. So the whole ocean is there. But what if we came away from the, the, the fight of, of we must get business and we came away and we actually managed to get people's attention to begin with because a lot of people that we can spot and identify as an ideal client, we can look at them and say, that's a problem. That person's statistics and results are not an industry standard. They are spending way too much money they are losing too much staff that person's leadership skills are really causing problems to that company their customer service is terrible but they just don't know it um okay. and they're just living with it thinking that's the way it is and a perfect example i have of this is um someone i met a couple of years ago um in the recruitment industry um for technology and they do um and in in, in that kind of environment the re in recruitment the recruiters tend to I leave their jobs very quickly. And the industry average okay. is 6%. In a year, 60% of your staff will change. Now, if you think what that's going to cost in terms of having an internal recruiter, you're going to need one, or you're going to be paying high fees. Um, you have frozen, Steve. Am I shocking you or are you actually, like, gone? <laughs> no, we're back. We we had some spinning screens for a second. Okay, cool. So I'll just go back to what I was saying. So this recruit in in recruitment. So if you've got sixty percent of your staff changing every year, you are most likely going to have an internal recruitment person, or else you're going to be spending very high fees on a recruiter doing the job for you. You're going to have to. Uh, I think the average of replacing an employee and getting them up to speed is about thirty thousand pounds, and then you've got wow. lots of continuity. Yeah, then you've got lots of continuity because that person leaves and all the relationships go and the new person has to come in and build the relationships back up. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very, very costly. But in recruitment, um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Gary Goldsmith, who is actually Kate, uh, Kate Middleton's uncle. I've had the wonderful pleasure of meeting him and being connected with him on LinkedIn and 
all the crazy things he has to say. Um, and when we spoke to him and said to him about that turnover and approach to selling, he said, this is the way the industry is and it's not going to change. And you can't teach us anything. Like, Ooh, this is the way it is. Love that. Um, this will be yeah. like red rag to bull. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what was interesting is, is he's part of this elite group of like the top 13 recruitment companies in the UK. And then I meet this wonderful guy called James and he has brought his recruitment, his turnover of staff down to 10% um, per annum. And so wow. where they're all living with the status quo, it's just the way it is. It's just the cost yep. of doing business. There's no overhead. Nothing can change. They don't know they have a problem and aren't aware of a solution. Until I tell him this little jumpstart has come in and got it down to 10%. Now they are like, what? What? So now we've created awareness that something could be different. Yep. Now we've got somebody's attention. Now they're inquisitive. So I do have a diagram, and I go through this in um, episode one of my new podcast that's coming out. Cool. Um, which is www.theexperteconomy.co.uk, if I may say. And when's it coming out? <laughs> uh, next week. Um, so the, the, um, yeah, the, the buying journey that you go through is someone doesn't know they have a problem and they are not looking for a solution. So you could post until you're blue in the face, but that person is not going to look. Until you create awareness that that's what they're going through right now, the status quo is not normal and it should be changed. At which point they identify okay. with you and go, that's me. Oh. And they'll go through a level of research mm. to define what that is and then diagnose themselves and go, actually, I do have this problem. In the modern day, we didn't do this 20 years ago, but we do it today. When I diagnose myself as a problem, <laughs> I am a problem, as having a problem, should I say, <laughs> um, a natural thing to do is to go to Google, um, watch some YouTube videos, read some articles, buy a book, talk to my friends. And so we go through this research stage and then we go through self-implementation, which is when I'm going to try and solve this problem for myself. And this is how okay. amazing it can work for you when you take this approach. Um, a lady in America was one day sat at her computer and she needed to reorganize her experience entries and the way they were lined up. And LinkedIn had just created a change that she couldn't understand and how to do it. She Googled it. My website came up. My blog post came up telling people this is how you reorder your experience on LinkedIn. And not only did I tell her the how so she could do it herself, but I also told her the theory and approach to why you should do it in this particular way. Okay. At which point she went, oh, that's interesting. I would never have thought of that before. So I've created awareness. So I've taken someone who's already know, looking for a solution. Yep. But instead of that, I've had them go, ha, there's more to this. At that point when there's more to it, she started looking around my website, read more things, and came across the page, which isn't very prominent on the website, to be fair, where you can sign up for a LinkedIn profile review, and it's actually paid for. Most of the pages you find are it's actually free. So yep. she's from America. She pays £70 to speak to me for 45 minutes, just based okay. on a Google search and reading that there's more to this, and going, huh, this person's really knowledgeable and seems to know what they're talking about. I should have a conversation. Yep. We get on that 45-minute call, and at the 30-minute point, she goes, so how can you help me? Like, how do we take this forward? And she literally begs me to tell her what my packages are and how to help. Within half an hour, she spent £3,000 with me. Wow. And that's, yeah, that's what we are talking about, where you – and there is a statistic that says, and I really do think it's one that's just made out of thin air, because when I try to go around the internet of trying to find the actual source of this – it loops around. <laughs> so I always say that as a caveat because I don't like throwing stupid statistics out there. But I think that we can see from our own journey, and this is why I use it, because from our own experience, um, we can see that this is actually true, that um, 70, when someone discovers that they have a problem with you, yep. they are 77% 70, 70, 70 likely to stay with you to get their solution. Okay. Because the trust is bought, bought into, the, the trust is developed, your philosophy is brought into, your methodology is brought into, they get yep. your approach, they get why you're doing it. And there's that level of exposure and a rapport where they will stay with you. And you go to some other supplier and you say, hey, can you help me with Facebook ads today? I'm like, yeah, we can take you on. Yeah, we'll get that done. Great. And you're like, do you know about this? Do you know about that? Oh, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't trust that person that they're going to do all this wonderful stuff this other person's told me. 
Yeah. And so they'll stay with you. And when they work with you, and this is what I think is so fundamental, when they work with you, they trust your approach. They trust why you're doing stuff and they let you get on and be an expert and do what you're great at. Yeah. Um, and I have a really key story inside of that, but we haven't got time for it, I'm sure. Um, so just going back to your LinkedIn profile, when it comes to your summary, what we're looking for is that creating awareness paragraph at the very beginning where you have that person go, huh, I didn't know that before. And then they carry on. And even if they go, huh, I didn't know that before. This isn't my industry. I'm moving on. They remember what you've just said. And when they're down the pub or at dinner and they want something really knowledgeable to say in that dinner conversation, they go, oh, well, I, I understand that it's like this. Or apparently it's like this, this, and this, this. And they pass it on. And they create awareness in your ideal target market that they're actually speaking to. Um, and right. even if that person doesn't remember your profile to be able to say your name, that creating awareness is the same as, I think I'd like to buy a, a mini. Oh, look, there's a countryman. This happened to me. There's a countryman a model where the doors come out. I have never seen that before. Oh, but actually that rest of that day, I, I walked past 14 of them. I just never noticed yeah. them, before, but they definitely existed. Um, and so when you create awareness in somebody, that is literally what happens. So even if I'm a non-prospect reads it, they go bring it up in conversation. Awareness is created and your LinkedIn profile, because of the connections, likely your headline will come up another in a day or two and they'll go, ah, oh, and then they go. Um, also, it's also for the people that um, surround your decision maker. So you could have made, well, there's so much I could say here, but I once bought a, a 2,000 pound health retreat um, in Spain. I was really looking forward to going. It was two weeks away from going and about a week later, I was like, what the hell have I signed up to and given all my money away to? So I was starting to get into buyer's remorse, needed a bit of reinsurance, went to the person's LinkedIn profile, and it basically said that he uh, used to be a stripper and entertained the ladies. Uh. I was like, what? <laughs> and so I phoned him up and I had to go through this whole conversation. What's your background? What's your history? What What is this? And got reassured and everything was fine. He did used to, he, he sort of big company like the Chippendales for millions, but a UK version. Um, so it was kind of not true. Um, <laughs> and um, I actually rewrote his profile off the back of that because you the saw impact his profile was so for him. I did. <laughs> you, your people go into buyer's remorse and they need to like check you out and they need to see that who have I bought. Yep. If I came home and told my partner that I have just spent five thousand pounds on a solution and I've used up all of our savings, he go with who and why? I can tell him the principles of it. He goes, okay, I get them in your solution, but who is who is Steve Thompson and why are we working with him and why is this digital company called Big Daddy? Like, who is he? Who yep. who has convinced my girlfriend that this is what we should be doing? Um, and so the he will come and look. Parents will come and look. Children and, will come and look and make sure that their parents are... it's really are interesting you say that because that literally has happened. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> Oh, you're frozen again. Um, are you back? So it's not, sometimes a profile isn't just for the buyer. It's actually for all the people that surround the buyer. Um, and and so that headline, right, I'm getting diver. I'm, I must get back to the point. So the headline is to create awareness. Yeah. Then you say what your solution is. I At, at this company, I help, um, and, you know, at, at Big Daddy, we do PR for people with heart, the people that want to da 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 So mission statement. We do this by da 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 Really powerful statements are, I believe, in my opinion, I've seen firsthand. Because that's like having a conversation with somebody. The profile yep. always needs to be written in the first person. Um, so you literally are bringing people through that process of coming aware with you. And then you put on there your call to action. Like, If you'd like to know more, um, I invite you, in my case, to come and have a LinkedIn profile re re review with me. It's 30 minutes. I'll tell you everything to do yourself. And you can buy if you want to. Um, so so people know what that next step is and that next step is really important it can't just be a willy-nilly conversation it's got to have some structure and it's got to add value because nobody shows up to a, a free diagnostic session that isn't going to be of value because it's not free it's my personal information it's my time yeah. it's my vulnerability right. so i need to be getting something back so that we we pitch what that call to action is right there then in the experience entry for your company, you want to connect that with a company page, whether you post on that company page or not, because the logo will come through. 
don't put okay. owner found yeah don't put owner founder unless it has some reason or even director can sound weird as well try and key lo keyword load it i think mine says linkedin profile writer um try i think with the expert economy it says founder because that is logical or no i think i'm the principal trainer actually um so so d yeah so get the term right. Um, and then inside of that, what you want to do is overview. This is what the company does. This is why we do it. And we help buy. And here you want to talk about how you help people in your packages. I use capital letters to, to make the boundary between each one. And in the first one, you want to tell people that really big core package that you offer. And the person says, um, oh, wow, I really want that. Oh, but you know what? I don't know you well enough yet. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, but this next one looks interesting, cause, and that's your product for prospects. You go, oh, I could, I could go along with that. That could work, but mm, I still don't know you well enough. It doesn't fit well with me. Next one. Oh, she's offering a free half an hour LinkedIn profile review session. Now that I can do. So you see how you give and it takes away, gives and takes away, and then they go, oh, yeah, I can do that. And then again, okay. there's that call to action of how to go forward. So you're actually getting the, the lead. Then you've got things like you can put videos on there, you can attach documents on there, um, anything that can bring color to the profile, take people a little bit deeper. But just remember that we're not here to distract people. We're not here to take them off here, there and everywhere because we need to keep them to go through the, the process we've got. So anything that you're adding needs to be um, really benefiting that. Do I want to have this appointment with this person? Does this feel like a good use of my time? Do I trust them to phone them up and actually share my vulnerable information with them? Um, so all of those things need to go in. And then on the background, on the past experience or your job entries, sometimes I leave them as people have written them um, if they are in employment and they might need it as it was um, at some point. Or, it's, or the background experience just doesn't relate to what they're doing at all now. Right. Um, but most of the time I change it and it's looking at, especially for the expert entrepreneur, and I'll say it from this point of view because it's the most powerful one, but from a sales perspective, it also works in that what is your, um, why are you, why do you believe what you believe? How did this come about? So one person I wrote a LinkedIn profile for, he had a very clear approach to project management that some people can go through uncertainty and change in a project, and some people really need it to be steady and take people through a process. Yeah. And, none, and you just literally can't. If you put a process person in a creative environment, they will fail. And like 80% of project managers fail, have very short careers and burn out, for example. So then when you realize that you need a, the uncertain and the certain type of product, project manager, it, it works. And he had figured this out. And so it was in his summary how he figured it out. But going back through chronologically, in the job that he figured it out, we told the story of how it came about. How did he figure it out? Now, it's not that everyone's going to get that far down and actually read all of that. But someone who's about to buy, he's right yeah. on that point, or going through buyer's remorse or questioning it, they will read that. Um, and so, it, you know, you start to tell the story about how you developed your theories and how it came about and how it bubbled through. Um, if you've rebranded your company, for example, you can have the old brand in there because people recognize it and you can say what the company did and then why you rebranded and what the new philosophy was and how you took that forward and how it now became the new brand. Okay. And then the new brand, it will be exactly as I said, you know, like this is what we do, this is why we do it, and this is our packages, call to action. So it gives you extra space. And, and you're looking for that kind of, that rapport building, giving people the information, giving them the opportunity to see into you. If you are somebody like Daniel Prusi, who both of us know, who will tell stories from the stage and refer back to different points in your life, your LinkedIn profile is so important because those stories need, can get into the chronological so we can see where it came about. Um, if you're putting a book on there, don't just put the back cover of the book. Tell us why you wrote the book and why you were inspired to write the book and why you feel the book is so important. Um, so yeah, those are my key headline takeaways for the profile. I love it. And you know what? I've sat here and there's so many people saying that, that this is absolute. I mean, let me just go through the comments. We've got people saying how much literally you know, they, they love the, what you, the advice that you're giving and the support. Um, and I like this one. 
I wish so, I could present myself as naturally with such confidence. Oh, I bet you can, Kirsty. You just don't know you can. <laughs> you should get her prove that she can do it. <laughs> you know what? There's a challenge, Kirsty. If you're watching still, and then please DM me, and we'll we'll look about getting you on the podcast at some point. <laughs> no, I mean, it's been it's been excellent. So let us know when the book's coming out, and where would you like people to connect with you? Yeah, great. So for the expert economy stuff, I invite people to go to www.theexperteconomy.co.uk. You'll see on there at the moment, um, there's a sign up list to be notified of episodes when they come out. Um, and that's got everything on there about the course as well under our programs. Um, for the LinkedIn side of things, I do have my book, which is the third, second book, which I didn't share earlier on, which is what's got on your LinkedIn profile. It is the 2018 edition. I try to have a new one every two years, but I'm going to rush a new one out by the end, by, by December 31st, just to say 2020, because um, <laughs> I've got the other two to figure out. Um, but the the principles and the direction, everything I've kind of hinted at and said is in this book. Saying that, though, um, if you go to www.theprofile.company, on there you will find everything I've been talking about fully available to you. Yep. Uh, you'll see a, a, an example. It's actually Daniel Priest's LinkedIn profile, which I wrote, um, a screenshot of it, and it's got all the different sections you can click through and you can read how to approach each different bit. And you can also download our ultimate guide. I have to look up my screen. The ultimate guide, um, a LinkedIn template, um, and just some really key takeaways to look at and consider. It's called Five Things to Know Before You Get Started. How to take your LinkedIn profile from good to great. <laughs> awesome. so, um, there's loads of resources on there. And, you know, it really is coming from my theory that there are, what, 660 million people on LinkedIn right now. Um, and I can't write all their profiles, and frankly, I wouldn't want to. So why not just give people the information, help them do it for themselves, and then if you do need my help, then you can get in touch. Um, so, yeah, that's my www.theprofile.company, full word, yep. company, um, for the LinkedIn stuff, and www.experteconomy, theexperteconomy.co.uk for my philosophy and approach to Awesome. Yeah. Well, I've shared I've shared all of those links in the in the chat, so um, everyone should have them across all the platforms. Naomi, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Um, thank you ever so much. I'm really really pleased that you you were able to come on. Thank you for having me. It's such an honour. It's an absolute well. You're welcome. I, I love chatting to you. We could literally go on. It's really funny because just to uh, let everyone else know and to, to to let you know as well, I usually limit these to thirty minutes. We've been here for over an hour. <laughs> 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 Friday mornings is like 11 to 11 30 let's smash it let's have some fun I was like do you know what just keep going this is this is gold and so many people will benefit from it yeah thank you and I've I've really enjoyed your company as always well I say trying to keep a podcast this is my little act my, my thing right now I'm trying to keep a podcast for 30 minutes they're going to one hour right now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this episode's an hour <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> so I'll speak to you soon brilliant thanks Steve Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey everyone, so you've got so much action to take right now. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of value. I'm super, super excited to be getting hold of a copy of Naomi's book when it comes out. Um, so the links are in in the chat, the profilecompany.co.uk, um, um, and we've got the experteconomy.co.uk. Go and check out uh, Naomi. Go and um, Go and connect with her. Look at look. Take the summer months to sit down and do a review because if you want people to come to your LinkedIn account and see you as a professional person to do business with, like Naomi said, get rid of the lanyard, put the pint of beer down, and you know, and have a you know a a personable but professional profile picture. It doesn't have to be you know grey suit tie on and you know as it is go and check out Naomi's Naomi is you know you've got everything there you could literally go model Naomi right now um, but absolutely go and um, go and connect with Naomi over on LinkedIn guys it's been an absolute pleasure we'll have a new guest for you next Friday morning um, I wish you all a merry merry weekend why I said merry I don't know I was going to say happy but do you know what when we're live and you're being completely and unapologetically you you can say what you want and when you own the show as well it's kind of your prerogative. Come and join us in the Heart Brand Academy. Um, if you want any information, let me know. Drop it in the link um, in the comments. I'll drop a link in there for you so you can come and learn more about what the Heart Brand Academy does. So you can build the profile of you so you can activate your personal brand so you can get all of the information from the experts um, and be guided along the way. Take care, my friends, and I will see you in Tea with Steve.